Time to go night night. Make me. Make me lay down. Okay. I heard it. I heard that obedience. Mm, now we be now we begin the licking. <laughs> Enjoy the sounds of the holidays, right? Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 93. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 100 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit right down here on this bench and we talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. And that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So we are in the home stretch, right? On our way to Christmas, tonight is our last live stream for the 12 days of keto Christmas. Yeah, because they're gonna be watching this on Monday. That's right. And that's how many more shopping days we have. Yeah. It's just this few before Christmas. And this is an interesting Christmas for us because we decided this year, we're not gonna make Christmas like all about the food. Like we're gonna make it all about family and we're doing like simple Christmas keto meals, right? We're doing hamburgers and hot dogs and eggs and bacon. Grilled and, chicken. Yeah. Yeah, it is super, super simple, but mm -hmm. I think we're gonna have enough variety that everybody's gonna enjoy it. But right. if everybody doesn't need a bunch of side dishes, we're not making a bunch of side dishes. Yeah. But let us know down in the comment section, like what are your Christmas plan dinners like are you first of all are you going out or are you staying at home but what are you cooking are you going off of keto or are you staying on keto are you making steaks are you making turkey ham. Making ham let us know down in that comment section what your plans are for eating on christmas i did get one request this morning okay my mom said you guys need to bring the keto child drop biscuits yeah i'm planning on the drop biscuits and i'm also planning on the uh, Oh Hello Bakery version of the sausage pumpkin soup using keto chow. And I have to have it for a big thing because like that recipe makes 12. And like each serving is like 500 calories. And so yeah, if I make that and leave it at home, I'll probably eat the entire thing in a day. So this is a great place to bring it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because I have been wanting to try that. But yeah, the biscuits are a huge hit. And we do a little bit of breakfast before we open our presents because we open on Christmas morning. So that's another thing that I'm interested in. Are you a Christmas Eve present opener? Are you Christmas morning? Because different families do different, do different things. things. You know, now speaking of keto chow, the flavor of the week this week is chocolate peanut butter. And it's the only one that's in this kind of weirdy package. Yeah, because it's got Cute. a lot of peanut flour in it, which is why it's a little bit thicker. It's also a little bit fattier, which is why it makes the best keto chow ice cream. Yeah, it's really great for ice cream. It's delicious. I love it. So that's this week's flavor of the week. And uh, yeah, gonna be uh, an interesting week. Like our weather, by the way, you look awesome. You look nice and Christmassy today. Aw, oh, well, it's been colder. It's been colder. Our weather's been so weird. Like, okay, so we have a week where it's in like the 30s. Right. Then we decide to go dry camping and it's in the 80s of the whole course. time we're camping. Absolutely. Then we come home and we take the boys to Universal Studio and it's back into the 40s. And now for Christmas, it's going to be in the 70s and 80s, all, high 70s and 80s all week long. So, so like, our weather doesn't know what it wants to do. Well, we'll just tell my mom, you know, make it Arctic mm -hmm. in the house so that we can enjoy the air conditioning and like the fake I Christmas. I don't need it to be Arctic. Well, Unless we can set up the snow machine from church and just blow soap bubbles all over her house. I, I don't think know. she's going to appreciate that, but... It'll, it'll be fun. It'll probably be nice because we're having like an open air Christmas service on Christmas Eve. Right. So at least it will be reasonable temperatures because, you know, yeah. you say if you're going to be outdoors, you want it like super cold in Florida, but we're not used to it. No. That's difficult to just sit on a blanket. We and were walking freeze. around at Universal Studios and I was freezing. I was glad to keep moving. Yeah. Excuses to keep moving. And then when you hear the holiday music, I just start dancing. <laughs> I got to keep moving and I'm dancing. 
I love it. Getting into the month of January, we're going to be doing a month-long fast. Mm -hmm. So not going to be too many review videos on food coming into the month of January. Well, lots of support and conversations as we start yeah. the new year, you know, finding out what people's goals are for yes. this year. And we definitely saw a turn in our own keto journey from, you know, focusing on weight loss to really you know, exploring all of the health benefits of this lifestyle and That's really right. focusing our attention on, on that and where we're seeing better health. Mm -hmm. And I'm really hoping that that continues to be the focus moving forward into 2021 that, you know, yes, the weight loss is a side effect, but the good health is really the mission. Right. Well, you know what? Why don't we take a quick commercial break right here and we'll jump right into our adjunct professor of the week and the subscriber of the week and then all of the different comments from last week's video. Sounds great. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That was good. Thank you. I'm looking in here. I guess I should have worn like a hat, huh? Like, a Santa hat? Or, or like a Band-Aid because mm -hmm. I still got a big giant divot inside of my head. That's super cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a part of Keto on the Couch where we like to celebrate our subscribers and talk about like adjunct professor of the week, people who are doing things that are inspirational mm -hmm. and celebrate people who are having some successes and also the comments. But before we do, I really wanted to thank everybody for posting all of their different foods that they're eating on Meaty Mondays. Yes, that has been such an inspiration to us and so many other people. We started out just doing it to let Heath know in our family group that we love him and that we support him while him and um, Shelly are on the, the MS journey for Heath. But it has just been inspirational for me as well, right? Mm -hmm. To just see the community. Sometimes you just need a reminder that you have a community. You've got people that love you and, and care about one another. And it really has been inspirational. Yeah. So if you don't know what we're talking about, like what we've done is every Monday, we've kind of declared it Meaty Monday yep. in honor of Heath because Heath is battling MS right now. And so what we do is... Whatever you're eating on Monday, try to make it a carnivore day. Yeah. Uh, not eat any keto treats. And and listen, things like chaffles, that's carnivore. Basically yeah. anything that comes from an animal, you're good. And just put your pictures up and put hashtag Meaty Monday. And I love seeing those different posts in the Facebook group. Me too. And it's also a chance to see some new recipes because yep. people get creative. Oh, yeah. When you're thinking to yourself, like on Monday, I need to make it, you know, a, a carnivore meal or I need to make it like all, you know, meat derivative. It's kind of cool because you yep. get creative. That's right. So. so with that being said, let's get right into our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. And this is somebody who has put up a post who is really trying to inspire people through that post. And this week, we actually chose Pat. Hey, Pat. And Pat actually emailed me to make sure this was okay. I do want to say I took her post and I kind of condensed it a little bit because mm -hmm. it was long and I, otherwise we can't really read it. We, we're already hard of seeing. So she wrote, y'all, I've been stalled for well over a year. Problem is I'm not even close to goal yet. I need to tighten it down and get more fat off. I'm setting goals for myself that I plan to meet every single day for 75 days in a row. Part of my plan is going to be to eat what only what I plan to eat for the day and do some cardio and some muscle toning every day. Because she did say that she has like our kind of thing. Like if she she kind of goes off of her eating plan, like she says, I'm going to eat like this and then mm -hmm. she eats something else. So right. that's part of her plan is like eat what she said she was going to eat. Yeah. She said, I love the daily thread that Michelle has been doing for our food. And I think I'd like to start one for daily movement. Awesome. What do you guys think? These daily habits will help us to get our goals and help us to stay there. I love that. Yes. This is great. I mean, honestly, when you look at different plans like Weight Watchers and Nutrisystem or Jenny Craig or some of these wins where you have to check in with somebody, I mean, that's what you're paying for. That's right. You're paying for accountability and some structure to it. Even if you've ever been a part of like CrossFit right. or certain gyms, they're giving you a workout of the day. That's what the WOD is, W-O-D, a workout of the day. Right. They're giving you kind of a plan so that you know, okay, well, what is the group doing? Because left to my own devices, you know, I can kind of get lazy, especially if you know, if I'm saying, well, I don't want to do crunches or I don't want to do burpees or I don't want to have to do a run. So if I'm the one that's deciding what the movement is of the day, 
you know, I'm only going to pick the certain things that I enjoy yeah. doing. Right. But if you have somebody else that's choosing the movement for the day, that's when you really can, you know, expand your exercise routine. So thank you so much yeah. for volunteering to do that. I think that this is awesome. And also, I do want to say, we really appreciate your messaging us just saying, hey, is it okay if I do yeah. this? Now, for the most part, as this is your group, our Facebook family group. If you're not a member of it, go join it. That's first of all. But um, it's for you guys. We set it up for you guys to create that family atmosphere. Uh, we have very little rules. I mean, the biggest rule we have is please, there's no keto police allowed in there. There's right. no judging people. And the other thing is, is please not posting like a bunch of multi-level marketing or other companies or other influencers affiliate links. But other than that, you know, please, you know, put up there. If you have something that's going to inspire people, feel free to share that kind of stuff. Well, and point other people to it. If you have like friends or family that are starting to, you know, in January, people make, you know, plans for the year and they're ready to, to get serious about it. I love that this is a free option for them. So that's they right. don't have to bump, you know, put a bunch of money into, you know, having some exercise goals each day. They've got some direction and they've got some support and it's free. That's right. Well, let's get into our subscriber of the week. And again, this is from our Facebook family group. And again, if you're not a member of our Facebook family group, go join it. There are, I don't even know how many people in there, like 3,000 people yeah. in there. And they're there putting up daily posts of like what they're eating or what they're doing for workout or recipes, sharing deals, sharing motivational stories, just struggles. And we always ask you, share your story in there, whether you've been doing keto for a day, a week, a month, or five years, because whatever you're going through, there's somebody else going through it. And when you share your struggles or your successes, that's going to inspire somebody else. Also, we have our Discord. Make sure you go join that. That's completely free. There's a link down below. And there's people always in there chatting and stuff to, if you need like attention right away. Yeah. But this week's subscriber of the week is Shelly. Hey, Shelly. She says, Christmas came early for me this morning. I achieved another 10 pound loss milestone. Wow. Take a look at those pictures. Oh my gracious. 150 pounds gone. And it says happiness is is being only two pounds away from your goal weight instead of 152 pounds. That is awesome. That I is awesome. I absolutely love that. Yeah, that's so incredible. Great job. Congratulations, Shelly. Okay, let's get into the comments from last week's YouTube videos. Our uh, first one is from Melly Mel. Hey, she Melly. said, you've become my new Monday must-see TV. Aww. I watch you while doing the mundane morning tax on my job. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for being here. And I love that. Yes, I love if we can be part of your routine. That's great because I think hearing encouragement from other people mm -hmm. and knowing that you're part of the family, that's a really great way to start your week. Yeah. Next one is from Emily. Hey, Emily. She says, you guys need to do vlog the, the geocaching. It sounds so much fun. Take us all along when you do it. So we did actually download the app and we started looking at it and it looks like a lot of fun. We're yeah. just going to try to find some time. And we're going to use it as part of our like get out of the house kind of exercise, I think, especially as the you know holidays start to dwindle down and we have a little bit more time and you're not going through the hustle and bustle of parties and shopping and everything else but we were actually even looking at it when we went camping last week and there were things all over the place and there's even a bunch in this area so we're super excited and we will definitely be doing a little bit of vlogging while we try that out well because our nephews and even our kids have done the pokemon go that's pretty much what it is and it's really kind of what it is but i feel like we will understand this more because i don't know all of the Pokemon characters so I don't know when to get excited about achieving something but you know you have to have the nephews tell you like well this is a great character right. you know with a lot of points but I feel I think this is better for us and this is just about finding like little trinkets and things that people leave and clues and we like that kind of stuff yeah okay next one is from Kristen hey Kristen she said shopping is done and I totally am a year-round shopper it's been odd this year as I've shopped a local a little bit but done a lot of online shopping I do agree I didn't realize my taste would change so dramatically removing all of the sugar and the carbs yeah I mean we have done mostly online shopping this kind year of been forced to this year huh yeah I mean I am used to going you know to the stores but it's just like I can't wait in lines anymore. Once yeah. you've had like the Amazon experience and I can just stay in my pajamas, I mean, 
There's something awesome about I it. I am not a line person. Rachel will tell you that. No. I, I'm, just, I'm like one of those people that will drive like 20 miles out of my way to avoid sitting in bumper to bumper traffic. Even if the 20 miles out of my way adds 30 minutes onto my trip, if like as opposed to sitting in that traffic. I don't like waiting very much, but even worse than that, like going out, I'm an instantaneous person. So if I can just order something online and then have it delivered and I don't have to really do anything, it's great. But I do have a little issue. Okay. So Amazon's got this like same day delivery thing, but you have to spend $35 to do the same day delivery. How many of you guys are guilty of it pops up with same day delivery when you spend $35 and let's say the item is $10, for example, like right. a recent gift that we bought for somebody. How many of you guys start going through your wish list or even just searching for random things on Amazon that fall into that same day category so that you can get whatever you wanted delivered today, even if you don't need that like thing that you're buying for another week? So yeah, so you, you're buying a $10 gift and you're spending an extra 25 that you don't need to spend right now in order to, to get, get the, the $10 back. gift today, but I don't even need it today. I really need it in a week. I, am I the only one with this issue? I, ho I hope so. I, I actually I, I can't that's believe the I'm the only one that has this issue. Let us know down in the comment section. Okay, next one is from Michelle. Hey Michelle, she says, I gave my husband his laptop about a month ago too. I can't control myself. I buy the gifts, get excited, and give them to everybody early, and then have to do it again. That is definitely my problem. Rachel has gotten every, and we weren't supposed to be doing Christmas gifts this year because we bought the camper, but I got a good deal, and I gave her the you know laptop, now, your planner, you did insist on getting that one early. I did because I knew that I wanted to start setting it up early. So we got, I got an Erin Condren um, planner. planner. I'll put a link for that down below. Which is amazing and I'm so excited about it. And because, and you don't have to get that planner, but I'm really excited about one that's breaking down each day by the half hour. Right. So that I can be super accountable of like where my time is going. And then if you are trying to have some movement goals, you can, you know, put that in where it needs to be. Like if you need to do it at 6.30 in the morning or seven o'clock at night, you've got room for it and you can schedule it. And I love that. Yeah. Now it's funny because when we bought it, we got it on Black Friday and was a really good deal. It was yeah. like 30% yeah. off because when we first looked at the price, we're like, oh my gosh, those things are super expensive. But when we got it, we really noticed like why it's more expensive, like the quality of the pages, the way it was broken down. So I know you're really excited about that. I do have something for you to write in there. While you were out dropping off shipping this morning, I got a notice from that like app that constantly is searching for campgrounds. Okay. And the last week of February, it's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and we probably will be taking off on Sunday for this one. Okay. Because while well, we can leave earlier on Sunday or midday on Sunday, I got us three days to the state park that is on the ocean in the what? Keys. And our campsite is directly on the beach in the Keys. Happy Valentine's so, Day like, to this us. This is a state park that is booked a year in advance. And we have been trying like since yes. August to get this campsite. So like... I know I didn't ask you, but again, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and it finally popped up that there were two nights available. So put that in your planner wow. that we will be going camping at that park in that in February. How so, exciting. Well I'm done, excited, sir. I'm excited to pull the camper up to the beach in the Keys in February. It's not going to be too hot. It's not going to be mosquito-y. Just right. It's going to be perfect. We may even be able to go into the water in February because it's like all the way down in the Keys. You never know. You never know. With Florida. So. You just don't know. Next one is from Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. She says, we are a buy and give then family. After my brother was killed in 1984 and meeting others who lost family members, it made us realize that we never know what tomorrow ever brings. So why save up items that people can use all through the year for one day a year and not knowing if that person will be here at Christmas? But we will usually have one unimportant gift for that day just to have something to open and some stocking stuffers. Wow. Well, well, first of all, Stephanie, we're sorry for the loss of your brother. Yes. But I do like that attitude of you know just you see a need and you fulfill it and like why make them wait to Christmas and, and I like that I mean 
I like giving gifts when I find them because number one, I like seeing like the enjoyment on your face, but I also usually find that because I know that there's a need and then you know what, just spend Christmas together as a family because that's really what it's all about. I think that 2020 as a whole has told us don't wait yeah. for things, especially experiences. I mean, the gifts, obviously that's a big part of Christmas, but you know, the gift of time is mm -hmm. precious. And I actually love that, you know, we followed our own advice this week and kind of pushed pause even on the, the 10 day or the 12 days of keto in order for us to go out with the boys because there was some time and availability that we could all get together as a family and just go to Universal for a day. Right. You know, and uh, the house needed to get picked up and you know, I had laundry to do and there there's always things and stuff to do to keep busy. Right. But we were like, don't wait. Let's just go right now. Speaking of Universal, that was an awesome trip. We had such a good time. So many memories made that yeah. day. And it was funny. I, I have to tell how we concluded this day because it just made the day so much better. So we had taken Caleb, who has not been to Universal Studios very often because he had school and he wasn't mm -hmm. able to do the annual pass this year. And... So there's a brand new ride there, right? Hagrid. Hagrid. And it's a very difficult ride to get on. Like as soon as you walk in the door, it's like a two hour wait. Right. And, and like, I remember when we got there, we were like, okay, it's a, you know, 75 minute wait. And Caleb's like, no. And I'm like, but the park doesn't open for another hour. So you're going to spend the first hour of it standing online right. for a ride. And then you see really only losing a half hour in the park. He's like, I don't want to wait online. Cause he doesn't like to wait either. He's, he's like, he's, he's like me. Joe's child. So. Later on in the day, they have this thing where you can kind of go online and keep and like st have the, your phone stand in line for you. But it never was showing up. So towards the end of the day, Anthony's like, you've got to go on Hagrid's at night. And so at the end of the day, we're like, it never let us do that virtual Couldn't line. make the appointment. So Anthony and I go up to the front. We go up and, and everybody else stands behind them. We're like, we want nothing to do with this. I have a hard time like asking for something, speaking up. Like I, I you know, asking for more guacamole is, is, is a challenge for me, right? Like, can mm -hmm. I have some extra sour cream? I was, it was hard for me to ask for ketchup packets back before keto right. when we would go to McDonald's and Joe's like, just ask them for more napkins. I can't do that. Right, right. So we go up to the um, guest services and we say, listen, you know, we came here, we brought Anthony's girlfriend, we brought my son, and we just wanted them to experience like all of the rides. You know, we're annual pass holders and we weren't able to get on this ride. And the guy goes, no problem, I'm going to take care of you. And he gives us these special Willy Wonka looking ticket. They're like gold tickets and it's a fast pass, which you cannot get for that ride. It's like get out of jail free card. Go to the front of the line. Yeah. So, I mean, talk about Rachel being like, oh my gosh, we get all the way over. We finish the day handing these cards to the person on that's running the line. And she's like, Ooh, cold card. I, like, what did you do to get this? I felt like somebody with the last name Disney strolling into a ride at Disney. But I think the thing for you was really, it was as you're walking past the two oh. hour line. Oh my gosh, you're just and like people this. people are going like. What did they do? <laughs> Who did they kill or save? But it was just an awesome end to an awesome day. So, I mean, it really was. I'm so glad we took that time and made that memory, especially oh. all of it. Oh my goodness. I mean, it was beautiful. The weather was amazing. And yes, Hagrid at night, I cannot recommend highly enough. And it was not lost on me that we were there right in just like the middle of Christmas, the, 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 um, Hogwarts school was absolutely gorgeous, decorated. I mean, it was just a beautiful, beautiful time with our adult children that we're just very well aware are at the- Adults. <laughs> yeah, they're adults and they're at the intersection of like what's next in their life and we won't be able to be there every single day of that life, you know, moving right. forward and- don't wait. Right. Don't wait for, for later because you may miss out on something super important. That's right. So next up is from Christopher. Hey, Christopher. Christopher said the two hardest things for me to get rid of were probably milk and corn. Yeah, we asked last wow. week, like, what was the hardest thing to get rid of in your yeah. diet? He said separately, not mixed together. I don't think that there was a last thing as I kind of went all in at once and I made sure I could make good cookies before I started. You know, that's a great thing to do. I don't think that we like... 
we plan that enough. I think a lot of times we think to ourselves, all right, I know what I'm going to just like absolutely cut out, right. but we don't make provisions for ourselves you know, maybe moving forward where you're like, okay, what is something that I really love right now in this moment? And what is a keto option for that? Because I know I'm going to miss that. I know I'm going to want that. Let me go explore recipes even before I get started on keto to see like, is there something that I could use as a replacement for that? And right. I, I think that's brilliant. Yeah, I like that. Okay, next one is from Anne. Hey, Anne. She says, my taste buds have really changed. I don't even know what to prepare these days. Something sounds good and looks good, but after I prepare it, it disgusts me. Lynn is fine with it, but I'm not. It's really strange. I've stopped making anything that replaces things that we that we were used to. It always disappoints because it really doesn't replace it, so why bother? I love bacon, but lately cooking in basin grease falls into the it disgusts me category lately i've been craving tuna nuda casserole but i won't make it and i won't even try to replace it yeah you know your date tastes definitely do change when you're on keto i mean even like christopher i know christopher like the first time he even tried keto brick he was like oh my gosh this is disgusting way too salty and now it's like one of his favorite things to eat yeah you know i know a lot of times like you have like a super sweet tooth and then all of a sudden you know you don't care about sweets anymore. And it's not that way for everybody. But I do like what you're talking about in there where you're saying like, you know what, I'm not even going to try to make the things I used to because it's not the same. And I like that. And, you know, instead of, you know, going like, oh, what could I make that's going to remind me of eating this? Yeah. Find something else that you enjoy. Like, to me, there is no way I'm ever going to be able to replicate eating those five guys french fries right there's yeah. just no way so just get that out of my mind and find something else that i super enjoy eating and eat that all the time like i love pork rinds now is is it the same thing no but i just developed a taste for something else that i really like and a lot of times i try to make it something that i couldn't have eaten when I was on like the standard American diet because it was considered like a no-no, right? Yeah, and something that I felt like it is important for, for us to do and, and hopefully it is a blessing to people is every single day I am posting in Instagram stories a new recipe, an mm -hmm. easy recipe that maybe can help you try something new you know, change it up a bit because I do hear complaints sometimes from people who say, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, stuck in a rut and I'd like to try something new, but like what else is there? And hopefully we can help to inspire you to, to incorporate some new ingredients that you're not used to, you know, into a meal. Yeah. So next one is from Latte Lady. Hey, Latte Lady. She said, I wish I was one of those people that suddenly didn't like the food that they gave up. I ate my mother's yeast rolls this Thanksgiving after not having any kind of bread for over a year. You think someone had given me drugs with the way I had cried about how good they were. I love my keto foods, but I haven't lost the taste for the bad stuff. If anything, the bad stuff actually tastes better than they used to. Well, I mean, first of all, don't beat yourself up because, mm -hmm. you know, everybody has different palates and sometimes it takes a long time, you know, more time than other people for, you know, them to break the connection with that, you know, the food that they used to eat pre-keto. The other aspect of it, at least for me, is it was hardest for me to give up certain foods that were connected to people, places, and situations that I love. There's like, when you say it's my mother's yeast rolls, there's an emotional right. aspect to that. You know, when I would, I didn't want to give up my grandmother's banana pudding. Well, it's because it was connected to her. It wasn't right. just that the, the banana pudding was so delicious. It right. was that, you know, those were memories that I shared. And sometimes I've had to reach out and try to find other connections with those people and the places and things that I cherish from my childhood and my young adulthood that I want to bring into my life. So for me, it's been reaching out even to my mom and say like, Hey, I need to go through the photo album and get some more pictures, you know, get some trinkets, get some, you know, be able to cook my keto meals on my grandmother's dishes because then I have replaced her banana pudding with another different connection to her. I like that. I would say, give it time too. You know, everybody, like Rachel said, is on a different journey. And some people, their palates change and they don't care about things within three months. Some people, six months. Some people, it's a year. Some oh, people, yeah. it's more. For me, 
it took about a year to like not desire every single thing. Like one of the things I think that I struggled the most with that I wasn't gonna ever have anymore was like pizza. Cause I always was a pizza person. And so I learned to enjoy pizza without the crust. Now I never want the crust. Cause what did I really like about the pizza was the flavor of everything on the top. Yeah, it's true. Not the carrier, you know, but just, I would say find some alternatives, not necessarily like a duplicate or a look-alike or kind of thing, but maybe just something completely different, kind of like what we were talking about earlier, just finding something else and saying that like, you know what, I'm gonna be able to have this instead. Yeah. So let's do this, let's take one more commercial break and then we can come back to the Facebook comments. Okay. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. You're in a singing mood today. I am. It's crisp outside. Let's get into the comments. So first comment from Facebook is from Jeannie. Hey Jeannie, she says, Rachel, how many ounces is that Believe Cup? And that's I'm, what I'm drinking on today. You had on day nine and where did you find it? I love it and would love to find one. I don't know where you found it. It's like a gallon. I it's, don't know I how actually many. measured it before this live stream. Oh, okay. It holds all the way to the rim. It's 24 ounces. Wow. So you're looking at like, for the average person, if you're Rachel, like where you fill it up and you don't need to add anything, like you're gonna have to get 20 to 22 ounces without spilling it. Nice. Where and did you get it? We actually got it from a subscriber oh, that sent it okay. to us last year. So, you know, check Amazon because you may be able to, to find it there. Right. Okay, next one is from Shauna. Hey, Shauna. She said, snacking is out of control. Today's plan, every time I think of a snack, I'm gonna take a drink of water. Keto drinking game. I love that idea. I think Absolutely. it's a great idea. That's something that Dr. Cyrus talks about, like having a bridge. I would suggest maybe not making it water. Yeah. Maybe putting a little bit of like maybe Redmond sea salt or Redmond or um, the Redmond organic salt or a little bit of tea or coffee or something just so that you can use water as like quenching your thirst and then using something else as a bridge so that you don't kind of have your body mixing them up. But I love that idea of using something like every time I want to eat, I'm going to do this. This is what we talked about last week. Well, and I'm almost, as you're trying to break it, make it a little treat. Yeah. Like if, if you enjoy like a certain like flavor of Ultima or you've got a Zevia flavor that, that you like and you don't usually invest in it, I'd almost make that your drink because then it's a treat instead right. of a punishment. Right. Okay, next one is from Michelle. Hey, Michelle. She says, I just wanted to thank all of you for just letting me jump in here so much recently. As a newbie, this is an extremely welcoming community. There's been a lot more stress than normal lately, and it has helped me immensely just checking in here every day. I've also really enjoyed the lives and the Discord. Thanks, Joe and Rachel, for setting all this up. This is a great community. Well, first of all, you're welcome, Michelle. I mean, this was our intent. We wanted to be the support. We... we as two people who grew up heavy, have been heavy most of our lives, and not having that support out there, we wanted to provide a community where we can support each other, and instead of looking down yes. when we're walking down the street, we can look up and see other smiling faces, but it's honestly not us. It's you guys. I That's mean, right. We set up like a place, but it's you guys who have built this incredible community, and so we want to thank you guys for doing that. We are grateful for you. So the next one is from Keto Ray. Hey, Keto Ray. For those of you that make your own yogurt, what do you flavor it with? Okay, so if you're talking about our yogurt, which if you haven't seen that Gotta video, make it. I will leave a link for that right over Rachel's head. It is super, super easy to make. If you like yogurt, you're definitely gonna wanna try that out. Um, but, and even before we get into this, I do wanna say, if you go watch that video, if you haven't seen it, we do have a couple of little tweaks that we've made since we made that video. Number one, you don't have to use Fairlife milk. Right. We found an alternative. It's called Ultra. It's cheaper. It's the same kind of thing where it's ultra filtered milk, so it's half the sugar, uh, but it's a little bit cheaper. But what I like is it's a bigger container. It yeah. comes in a full half gallon carton. Also, I don't really use the nut milk bags We anymore. say them though, nut milk bags. Rachel likes to say nut milk bags. We got a strainer she and that's She doesn't not... want to squeeze the nut milk bags anymore. Mm, I do want to squeeze the nut milk bags. But, 
But Chris from Keto Chow actually showed us a much easier way to do it using a yogurt strainer. I will put a link for that down below. It's you awesome. can still use the nut milk bags, um, but I'm just letting you know that it makes it even easier than trying to twist up those bags and everything like that. So you can just pour it in the strainer and just let it sit. But as far as flavoring the yogurt, uh, depends on what you're doing. If you want like vanilla yogurt, a few drops of vanilla extract is perfect. You can actually use any extract. If you want banana yogurt, go get some banana extract. So you can, any of those extracts, you can also use the OOO flavoring drops. Uh, I'll put a link for them down below. You can get them on Amazon as well. Uh, what I would suggest, unless you want like an entire batch of vanilla, which I've made that ahead of time, Usually I like to flavor as I'm about to eat it. So okay. instead of like taking like the entire batch and making like an entire batch of like, you know, Girl Scout cookie flavor. Right. I divide it into little things where I put it in my bowl and then I put two or three drops of that in there along with some stevia or whatever sweetener you want to use. I just eat it plain. I know you do. It's so funny, right? <laughs> I mean, I like flavors and other things. Like I want my coffee with a flavor, but like for my yogurt, plain. Yeah. I mean, and that's one of the reasons oh, that we don't flavor the whole batch because number one, she wants it plain, but also that yogurt is so versatile. You can use sour it for cream. sour cream. You can use it for so many different things. So I try not to have a whole batch flavored at once. It tastes good on loaded broccoli. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Kelly said, can someone help me decide? I started on Keto Chow Fasting Drops, and then I went to the Mineral Drops, but they are too pricey for me, and I really didn't see or feel a difference. I do have the Redmond Salt Chunks, so which drops should I get? Electrolyte, Magnesium, or Fasting? I'm actually going to leave this up here so that I can kind of answer it. Um, I would say this. If you have the Redmond Salt Lakes, which is these here, you could pretty much eliminate the fasting drops because what the fasting drops are is it's pretty much straight sodium. Yeah. So if you are doing a fast or if you feel you need the sodium, which you're going to know that because you're going to be all tired, maybe a little lethargic, um, you can get some heart palpitations or even a uh, headache. So that's, a lot of times that's going to be sodium. You can just be licking on this. It's going to kind of accomplish the same thing as the fasting drops. Um, the magnesium drops... Here's the thing, magnesium is one of the hardest things for you to get in your diet, in the right. food you eat when you're doing keto. So I highly suggest having the magnesium drops. But the thing is, is you're not, it's not like it's caffeine and you're gonna notice a pep in your step when you yes. take the magnesium. It's more of preventing things. Like if you're sleeping at night and you start getting leg cramps, that means you're deficient in magnesium. So if you're not feeling it different, it means that you're doing really well. Yeah. Um, as far as the electrolyte drops, they're a good supplement. If you can only get one thing, honestly, what I would suggest is getting the daily minerals and the daily yeah. the mineral drops and having that and then having these to give yourself some more sodium because that's gonna be a good base for everything. You're gonna get your magnesium in there, you're gonna get your potassium in there, you're gonna get some sodium and then you can keep adding some more sodium in here and then maybe just having the magnesium but you don't need them every day. Just like if you start getting a little bit of leg cramps or having some trouble sleeping or something like that, you can take a few magnesium drops. Right. So hopefully that helps out a little bit. Next one is from Angina. Hey Angina, oh my gosh, that is the greatest ornament ever. So that's Lisa, she says, see, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I had to put this thing up here because it just made me chuckle when I found it. Because last week during one of our live streams, we were talking about like, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? And Jill I say yes. Very strongly and about this obviously, issue. obviously, so does Lisa. It just gave me such a good chuckle. I had to put it in there. So we have one more. And this one is from Carly's Mama. Hey, Carly's Mama. Said, this is the first eating lifestyle that is actually allowing me to fix my mental food issues. I have realized that I am a food addict and will always be in recovery, just enjoying freedom of not relapsing every day into food spirals. Yeah. I'm post-gastric bypass 15 years out and have tried every diet there is since I am a 1970s kid. None of those plans have ever worked on my head. Thank you both for all you share and allow so many of us to connect, especially in this crazy 2020 chapter, to know that we aren't alone and we weren't created to be alone. Yeah. Blessings and keto on. Well, Mama, thank you so much for for saying that. And, and I share your sentiment. You know, a lot of times we will identify ourselves as carb addicts, but really it's probably most accurate, at least for myself, to say I am a food addict. Mm -hmm. And unlike 
other addictions, I have to have a little bit of my addiction every single day, right? right? Like, you know, if you're an alcoholic or you're previously, you know, a heroin addict, you don't have to maintain your life by having a little bit of heroin each day moving right. forward. But for a food addict like me, I still have to eat. Right. I still have to have a relationship with this thing, mm -hmm. you know? So it is very challenging and we feel so grateful to be a part of your keto journey and for you to know that you're not alone, that you right. truly do have a community alongside you that cares about you and is cheering you on every single day, whether you have a victory or you have a defeat, we're sharing it. That's right. Well, that is gonna be this week's Keto on the Couch. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, there are 92 more Keto on the Couches, which I'm gonna link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which you're gonna find linked right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week, bye. bye.